Hello everyone! Have you ever needed a document signing feature for your app? Today, we are exploring document signing using third-party APIs, specifically the BoxSign API. My name is Ruben Boza and I'm a developer advocate at OutSystems. You know, I still remember my first big project in OutSystems. It was a document management system that was created for a water regulatory agency. And we dealt a lot with documents. And to be honest with you, I wish I had something like this back then. Sooner or later, if you are dealing with documents, the signing use case will pop up somewhere, right? There are plenty of things to do. For example, signing sales contracts or NDAs. A lot of things still require this signing use case. So in essence, you will find plenty of opportunities to implement the signing use case in your applications. If you think about it, the current process is broken. It usually involves sending a document via email to someone that then prints the document, signs it by hand, scans it, and then sends it back to the requester. It sounds very inefficient, but there's a better way. Let's take a look. Let me just show you a quick demo. I've got my demo over here. I'm going to log in with the demo user. I've got a list of uh, requests, so let's create a new request and let's send it to me, I guess, and then add myself as a signer to this document. Now I just need to create a request and a few seconds later, it will show up on my inbox. So it is converting. Let's check the status again. The status has been sent and now let's take a look at my email. So the recipient receives the email that he can then review the document. And of course, I need to agree and accept and continue and all that. There we go. I have a document that I can now click anywhere. Just for the example, let's sign it like this. Capture the signature, click adopt, send and finish. Very simple, very straightforward. Just like that, you can implement a document signing feature in your application. Once I finished my signing of the document, I can go back to the application and let's go in here. And as you can see, I have the recipients where I can see that Mr. River was signed that document. The demo app is very simple. As you can see here, I've got a home page that just brings a list from the API. I've got my access token get and the signed request list. Let's take a look at the signed request new. Essentially, this one will allow me to put the name and the email of someone that requires me to sign the document, manage that list, and then just send the request. Again, sending the request is fairly straightforward. You just go sign the request. We got the API token, and then you just call the method to send the request. And finally, we do have the sign the request details, which is, again, another simple call to the box sign get details from the sign request. So let's take a look at some of these services. I never had a chance to use a JSON web token before in order to get the access tokens. So I wanted to use this one in this case. A JSON web token is just a signed token, just a signed information. It implies that you have a private public key pair. The message is signed with your uh, private key and the other side has your public key and can confirm that you were in fact the entity who signed that message. So it's very easy for the other side to confirm that that message is actually coming from you, from what they are expecting to do. The JSON Web Token can be just signed, can be signed and encrypted. There's a bunch of other options. Make sure to check the description links down below. There is some information about JSON Web Tokens. Specifically, this has just a few service methods. Let's take a look at the access token get. And as you can see, it has all the management stuff in sense of is the token new or about to expire, then reuse a token or just create a new token. What else we have here? We have an explicit revoke token. So we can explicitly revoke a token. And we also have a box API configure plug. I thought it was a good idea because when you set up an application using the box, you set up the application to use all of the boxes APIs, you end up with a small JSON configuration file. So I thought it was a good idea to just upload that configuration file and have all the features configured for you. Because we are talking about um, access tokens, I actually took a little step further 
and I'm encrypting certain information that exists on the database. This access token is encrypted and also if you look at the configuration files, the client secret is encrypted and also the um, private key and the passphrase are also encrypted. So we should be okay if by any remote chance, this database ends up in the wrong hands. Moving on to the Sign API itself, not much here. The Sign API, it's really, really simple. So you only have like five methods. You get a list, a get, a create, a cancel, and a recent request. All of these most likely return a signed request object, which was imported very easily into the platform. The service actions themselves are just encapsulating the API call. So there is no translation happening here with the difference that when I get the access token, I put the word bearer and I could have done that using the on before request or something similar. Now, you'll notice that I do have a couple of things that don't belong here. So this service is supposed to be just box sign API. And you can see that I do have the box API files and the box file upload. I use this just to perform some testing and um, this shouldn't be here. The reason I've done this is because the box API component, current component that exists on the Forge is for traditional. So it doesn't work very well on React and I needed this to do my testing. Okay, let's take a deeper look into one of them. Let's say the create method, okay? As you can see, we just have a simple entry point. The request, this is kind of the minimal request that you need. You only need an email from one signer. You need a source file and you need the folder ID where that source file is located. From here, you will get a signed request object with a lot of details that then you can use within your application. Also notice that all of these, they have the authorization header over here. So I need to always pass this header. So the whole idea behind this was that instead of having an API that can only support one client, you could actually make this multi-tenant and multiple applications and it would all work seamlessly with your application. And just like that, you get the document signing feature in your application. Of course, there are some details that need to be ironed out. Just grab the component and get to coding. I almost forgot to show you the end of the process. So you get an email saying that the document is signed. You can go to the document. You can view the document. So you can see your beautiful signature over here. And you also get kind of a signing log, an official document that says this document was signed at a specific time, yada, yada. For more information, check out the description below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing to the channel because it really helps. You know what you have to do now, right? Go build those apps. Cheers, everyone.